Hello there, and in the spirit of the holiday season, Christmas, it is time to, to do our Christmas card. So this year we chose uh, this Santa geometry, now we have Santa in a glass bowl. So we're going to do the mesh, just to show you how to do some meshing here. We're not going to do simulation, but it can be also very interesting because you have there this now, so you can simulate the particles. But just doing the mesh, you will realize that it's, it's quite difficult now because we have this geometry, it's a quite tricky geometry. Uh, always the difficult part is finding the geometries and sometimes you find the geometries and you get these triangulations and they are very, very difficult to work with. So my main goal is just to show you how to do, to show you how easy it is to uh, generate the mesh for this geometry that in the end is not uh, an easy one. So uh, if you work with CFD a lot and if for you now meshing is a wall uh, bottleneck, I think this is the best Christmas gift for you, getting a good meshing tool and here you have this auction and now with CFD, the better meshing tool. So with no further ado, let's move to, to the meshing of this geometry. Okay, so we are in Innova the interface and let's open the geometry. So very important that Innova can read many, many, many format. You have it all those formats available there. And let me go here that you have this funky format here. And all these formats can be read by, by Innova. So let me read, I chose to use the OBG, which is a triangulation. I'm not going into details. Here we have the geometry. So very important, always understand your geometry. So here you have your transparency and you can look what you have there. So look at that, you have the glass sphere. It's divided into surfaces. Then you have here the holder. And you can see here that kind of there is a missing surface there, but actually it's not missing. It's just because it's subdivision there. You have this no and so on. So let me hide something here. So I don't want to see the fear. I don't want this no flakes there. So actually I can remove them. So delete groups and content. And I end uh, with this. So in the end, what I want to do is just the mesh around Santa in, in the sphere. I don't want to mesh the holder, but I want to show you something about the holder. That is, you look at the holder, you may see here that there is this missing surface, surface, which is not actually missing. You see that here you have two surfaces, but let's say that in the case that is that surface were missing. And I want to show you that you have some uh, geometry, uh, uh, some, you, you can repair your, your geometry using, you know, but in particular, it can be uh, very helpful when you have this kind of triangulations that, that can be very tricky to work with. You now it's very notorious that triangulations are very difficult. So let's say that, for instance, you want to add the surface or erase these surfaces that you have there. So you just can select and erase. So as you go here and you left click, you will select everything. So you are selecting everything because you have everything connected. So now you need to do those topologi topological separations. So to do that one, you can come here, right click in the geometry that you want to work with or in everything. And let's say that create feature edges. So when I use this feature, it will find no edges and using those edges is going to separate the geometry, do some, some operations that now you, you have to do what you want to do there. So if you have worked with Paraview and um, most likely also with open phone, you know that this feature edges is something that can be very tricky to, to capture. So I press there accept and see that you have all those edges capture, capture the the edges according to that angle criterion. And let's say that now, if I click here, see that now everything has been split according to those edges. And I want to remind you that it's very important to know the color, color coding. So black means that everything, two surfaces are connected here. Red means that you are missing a surface. So see here that here you don't have anything connected. And the other one will be yellow. That means that you have more than two surfaces connected to a single edge. And then you have blue that is something that is not connected to anything. So let's say here that I want to raise this. So right click, remove, remove, and see that how the color changed. Previously it was black, now I'm becoming. And if I erase this one, everything is going to disappear. 
and there you go you didn't have any more that edge and for instance let's say that you want to create now a face here to close that hole so you can select that edge so sometimes it can be tricky to select some edges or some entities so remember that you have the key e would select only the edge face only the face and only the nouns and so so sometimes can be handy so let me select that edge there and right click and see that you can click here create face for a single edges and voila there you go so see that the edge is black meaning that everything is closed and now that you have everything closed you can create your mesh there so this is just to want to uh, i want to show you how to do know how to repair fix the geometry but i'm not interested in this one so let me go and erase that we're interested in this okay and let's work here so let me add some transparency and let's see a few issues that we have so like in the previous one if i click here face we would select everything so i need to start to split everything so that's happening remember we have this stl geometry so we have the whole triangulation if you were using a cat it is a cat file ideas or whatever format cat exchange instead you are going to find all the underlying topology everything is going to be split according to what you did in your cat tool so here you have that information so that is what makes it tricky so like like we did for the holder right click and create features that values okay and see that is going to find features when you do that step you are splitting everything in different entities so see that now you have two and i want to select this one i want to remove i don't want that one and basically this will be my domain that is fair a fear then santa there but you have that hole there you can close that hole so let me show show you again edge i will select this edge right click and see that very easy you have this option here great face and that's all black means that is connected and it's already closed i can go a step further and let me select this face and let me create a group a group or name selection where i'm going to impose a boundary conditions or whatever so let me call it ground and there you go you have ground you have this sphere now let me call it glass and then you have sand and let me call it sand and this is it we have our domain there but we have some small issues here so if we look at the geometry look at that the fits here are very close to the ground there are some hole there might be some gaps issues so it's better to fix that okay to find the the correct intersection so there are a few ways to do that let me show you the easiest way and then i'm going to show you the most difficult way to show you how you can intersect stl file strangulation because that is very tricky it's difficult there are not many tools to do that and we can do it in an hour very easily so this is way to do that to do that intersection and to do the mesh will be the following so first we need to find you now or we need to translate you now the geometry where we want to put it to intersect so see that this will generate some problems even though that we can generate this mesh let's say from the physical point of view it's not right with one santa on the ground so let's do some translation so i select the whole surface and here you have the tools in geometry remember we're in geometry select here and let's translate and i already know my dimensions so this is how far i want to go so it's up to you but i go there and this is okay see that it's intersecting everything it is okay so now what i want to do is intersect this with this and you know triangulations that is not easy just to stress that so i will take the easiest uh, approach which will be i will do the mesh but when we do the mesh using the approach the three rack approach it will automatically erase this information so let's do something okay we're happy with this let's select these three surfaces or entities right click and we create a volume and i hope you are familiar with the concept of volume but volume means that everything that is inside here is going to be mesh so you can have multiple uh, volumes so it can be a little bit tricky so here in theory what is going to happen we're going to mesh but it's going to mesh 
also inside Santa, but then automatically it's going to find the intersection and everything will be a hole. So let's show you what is going on. So now that we're happy with this geometry, we go into mesh. Now here we choose the global parameters. So let me put this one. I already know these values, uh, kind of my dimensions. I just want to do first the mesh. And let me put here 16 and nothing else. So as you see, ANOVA doesn't require much inputs. It's, you only need to know the dimensions of the surf your surface of the elements, maximum and minimum, that would be enough. So if you want to know, get a visual reference of that, you can select the geometry. Let me go back geometry. You select the geometry, for instance, this. And here in group list, okay, you right click, sorry. And here you have set size item okay let me select set size item and here you can put a size and you will be able to see now the triangulation okay i chose uh, it's too large a value let me show it there and let me go now there and see there that you have it so you can get your visual reference that is very very helpful and let's say 0, 0, 0, 0.005 and then 0, 0, 0.01, it would be that small. Okay, so cancel, don't put anything there and let's go to meshing and basically these are the values I put there. Now I got my visual reference and pretty much at this point, that's all. So click here, global parameters, you have global parameters. I like to put this tab here and we have this geometry. Okay, so this is a dirty geometry. No doubt about that, difficult to work with and have that underlying topological uh, representation. So in these cases, I recommend you to use the string wrap mesh method. You can also use this method, but it, will, it is trickier. And also when you have this feature, edges can give you problems. So let's focus in this method, but both methods for this geometry, they should work, okay? But when you have dirty geometers, usually it's the common agreement in the community, use the string rack method, which is very robust in Innova. So you click here and it's going first just to, to, to it's going to wrap everything, but when it's wrapping everything, also see that it's erasing that excess mesh that you have there. This is not going to happen if you use the topological base. The topological base, the idea is that everything needs to be matching. You need you, you cannot have intersected surfaces. You need to have all the topological information. So as you use this method, it's not going to do that. So that's why also we want to use that. So we're taking this approach. And now that we have this and we can check now that we are happy with everything, you go to the second step. So here you are just wrapping and the second step is that you do a remeshing, you do a triangulation. So you capture better all the features and everything and you have a mesh that is ready to go to the volume meshing and boundary layer meshing so see that here we have already have a good mesh there so you can just by visual inspecting this you can have an idea that this will be a good mesh we have it here so for instance this was our first try so see here that we have the teddy bear so as we go there you have it there, it's captured and everything. So the details that you get depends on how fine you want to mesh. So let's do something that now it is working. And to show you also that ANOVA is always going to give you a good mesh for the boundary layer. So we can go and do the, that is next step. So the next step, let me enable now. I want to create boundary layer there and here also. And I want to create three layers. I don't want to go too much, but it's one, you can do it. I can guarantee you that always you are going to get good boundary measures of the first time. It's perfection that you can get here. So if I click here now, it is going to generate my boundary layer. Nothing happened, no errors, nothing. And now if I put a cut plane there, there you go. My cut plane and voila there you go your nice boundary layer so three layers but feel free to put more and believe me you're going to get always a good boundary layer so also we didn't 
uh, continue the boundary layer all in the, in the whole surface here in the sphere and see that you have the termination there and then it's going to add the new the new elements and it's going to keep the the, go, the good quality so now that you have this the next step will be creating your volume mesh so in enova we have the tetra and poly method there are also some other element types so you have the exa dominant but it's a research feature it's still it's not ready for uh for production use so this is it we have the mesh there and there you go as you can see a difficult geometry something that it may take you some time to fix or deal with now in and now it's very easy with a very good boundary layer and that's it we have our boundary layer our mesh their volume mesh and if you want you can go for the poly cells i like to use this structure because it's aligned it so but if you want you can disable that structure and remember that that option you have it here this lattice but i will leave it i always like to do that and now let me go the next step that after you have the tetra mesh you go and you get your poly mesh so usually that is the way not do you work with it poly mesh is the starting point it's a good tetra mesh and then you convert that into a poly mesh that have very very good properties and a big supporter of poly meshes very good meshes i love those meshes so whenever i can use poly meshes i use those and let me go here messages and um, we have here are the messages, what is happening, and we're in this step, converting the poly mesh. And it tends to be a little bit slow, but it's much, much faster than any other tools currently available. So let's wait a little bit to see our final result. Okay, so here we have our final result, and this is our surface mesh and now if we put there the our cut plane there you go and there is very nice poly mesh and this is it this is our santec in a glass bowl our christmas car so now as you want you can get something much much nicer so you only need to just change here the resolution in Santa. So a value of 0 0.01 will be, or 0 0.02 will be, will be a nice value. You're going to get a very nice surface mesh, but I'm not going to do it. What I want to show you is now how to repair this geometry. The other step, recall that we have this intersection here and I mentioned that that is not easy to do. That is tricky to do. So how you can do that in and out and let with the other approach so this was the easy approach we simply took the the string wrap and string wrap automatically will detect that and it will erase and it will do a very good job as you see here it's just creating the triangulation the other approach will be and let me again erase this i don't need it so and we have Santa, let me select here, let me split this, okay, and I want to erase this. So as you see, it's very easy to work with Inova, you have many options there, they're all available, just simply right click or here in your top ribbon. Select here, create face for single edge, and there you go, we have Translucent, you have it there. And now let me select this face. Let me hide this one. And I select this one. I want to translate it. To translate, you need to, to select this surface. And let me move it this distance down. And here, let me stop a little bit to talk about what we're going to do. So the previous step, remember, we went straight to the machine step and we use this one and automatically we'll do it. In this new step i'm not going to do that i'm going to do uh to do the manipulation of the triangulation which is the tricky part and something that not there are not many tools that can do that so let me 
erases that may disable transparency. So to convert this one to a mesh, to do the manipulation, so you are in the geometry model. So here in the geometry model, you cannot do that. You have this action here, but they don't work well. You need to go directly into your meshing tool. So if you go into the meshing, you don't need to mesh. What we're going to do is this action. So see that you convert your geometry to mesh so that STL or OBG or whatever you were using will be converted into a triangulation. And now that you have that triangulation here, you can do manipulation. So you have all these tools to manipulate your geometry. So look at that, you have all these options, but the interesting one is this one, intersection. Okay, we can intersect mesh and it will be a very clean intersection. Just to show you, for instance, you can go like this, select this and Pay attention that, okay, let me just select faces. Pay attention that you have all these faces and they're intersected. There is no edge defining that. So if you click there, now look at that. You have that edge there dividing that. So let's do that. So you can see that you can select triangles, triangles, and you can do it manually. So if you don't have many triangles, you can do it no one at a time and it's not that bad but here we have a lot of triangles so let's try to do things automatically so i will select this and i will grow my selection and i select this face and see that it's selected all these faces it's already separated or you have this feature edge but if you want to to define something else you can add this option here and you can break at angles and so on so i selected only this and now let me select also here, control. So to do multiple selections, control, and I will grow my selection. And to be sure that you are selecting everything, the fits there, the you have it there, the fit. And now we can do click here. And there you go, we have the intersection. So now the faces you don't have anymore there you now that nasty intersection so as you can see repairing stls here in innova can be very very easy so at this point you just need to raise that that maybe might be tricky in this case now but let's do like this and now let me go and do a selection so let me go here and rectangle touch and if i do like this and now i here have removed there or right click and there you go i remove everything and look at that you have your hole there and now also you can start to erase there the faces so this is the way that you can do it manually but also you have to be smart how you do this stuff or know a little bit what is happening so you get the point idea here you erase this one then erase there or let me go back to this so here i erase those probably you need to do a, little, a better work because there would be another face here but for instance you can select this one and then you erase that one and see that you're going to have the hole than, than the previous like in the previous case. But what I want to show you is another way to do since so it doesn't it doesn't work always, but I think like my experience 90% of the time it works. So first what we did is was that we convert the geometry to mesh. So this work with any geometry format. It's not necessarily needs to be an STL, it can be even a cat. I don't see any reason to do that with a cat geometry but you can do it but now that you have this and you have this intersection you can do the opposite you can go from mesh to geometry so let me do it and when you do this step this mesh to geometry is going to automatically and look at there to find the intersection and remember that we talk about the color coding the color coding is very important so yellow here means that we have three surfaces intersected three or more you know intersecting so if i go here to geometry model i can delete the mesh uh, always save everything now and then because it can be a little bit unstable these operations now doing this triangulation and man these manipulations and look at that now you have everything separated so when you do that it is separating so you select just this 
you can erase just this part so remove there you go you don't have any more and see here that also you have the intersection select there so you have the imprint when you go from mesh to geometry it's doing all those operations again and you remove and there you go you have your hole so previous case that i still have here we didn't do that automatically the dimension was detecting everything now we're doing everything manually so as you see it's not very difficult and now what we can do is dimension like in the previous case you have all the intersections there is nothing new and let's do it so a good me i go here meshing by the way let me go back here and let me select this one because i want to separate it. so for instance see that this sphere you cannot select here the buttons to, se to separate that w into the ground so remember that you need to create this and this feature it will detect it didn't detect in this case so you need to decrease the angle so that is the angle the intersection and now 30 degrees see that is working you have it there right click and then we move it to a new group i would call it ground just to have something similar to your previous case and see that ground your santa there inside and now we go to let me save it every now and then i recommend you and here pretty much the same we give dimension so in this case i will go and give these values let me put here 16 i just want to do the surface first so you can do everything in one click or in incremental step that is the way i do it i recommend you to do that so you have the option kind of the to do and undo but it, it is up to you but i prefer to work in that way so local parameters open here you can select your local parameters so now i will go to santa and i will put in santa 2 and i will enable also boundary layer to show you how easy to generate boundary layer so let me put here and let me go crazy and put 10. So I know that it is not ideal. You have seen the geometry that it might give you problems in some places, but you will get the idea that it always works. And here in the ground, let me put just three. And I'm going to use this method, but just to point out that in this case, if we use this one, it will work also. Okay, because, and let me do it, because we did this subdivision previous, uh, previously. In the other case that we didn't subdivide, we use the stream rack to do this, the, the subdivision. If you take those two surfaces intersecting, it's not going to work. Okay, so what we did is kind of a preparation to get it working with topology-based method. However, remember this, when you have dirty geometries, it is better to use the stream wrap method, dirty geometries or STL triangulation. So look at that, it's working very fine. You know, it's a very nice mesh there. So here you need to do the this step. This step here, remeshing is only applied for these ones. But one of the nice properties of the, or the capabilities of this topology base that also will detect automatically in what regions it can put quads to get better meshes, but also to reduce the, the silk count. So see here that is putting quads in these regions that it automatically will see that, okay, if I put these quads, I can reduce the cell count and, and get better quality. And let me hide there. Also this method, it will adapt much better to the curvature. So you have many features there that if you compare with the previous one, you will see that this one, it will have the tendency to resolve better look at here that is putting also quads in these regions to improve you know, the mesh quality get better meshes and so on so this is it uh, actually yeah it's much better here so visually just you can get an idea that this one works much much better the teddy bear is also nicer obviously in this case also the resolution no, it, it was much much larger but in any case also i'm quite sure that you put something similar this one is much much better uh for details so now the next step is generate the boundary layer so remember that i went a little bit crazy here I put 10 that maybe might be a little bit too much let me click here okay now i already have the messages there no messages here so i put it there so you can get the history what is happening what it's doing 
automatically remember it runs in parallel and will try to exploit you no know, to use all your your cards and that if you want to control that you have preferences that you can control you now the parallelization level and so on okay so this point since that we have a mesh for the boundary layer let me put a cut plane there and there you go so i was expecting it's not something super super nice because i know all these features all these details but look at that it's a fantastic one. so you have different transitions from 10 to 3 and it's resolving everything very well there is no collapsing like the other tool that you might be familiar with you are an open fund user so often or often not always commercial tools they behave much 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 better than a snappy x machine let me change this plane here and let me put it there and there you go you have a very nice boundary layer mesh so after this let's go to the next step that would be tap filling and now it's going to create the tetra mesh and after you have the tetra mesh if you want you can create the poly that I always recommend and a big support and I guess I need to do a lot of education when it comes to poly because not many people are familiar with those poly meshes so a lot of education to to demonstrate or you know, to validate but also to demonstrate the properties of those meshes so let's wait a little bit while this mesh is, is done okay so i'm back and there you go we have our nice mesh the tetra mesh resolving very well the surface your nice boundary ledger and this is it in very easy steps you can generate complicated geometries not very easy surface triangulations you can get super high quality mesh so let's do the last final step and let's do the poly mesh in this geometry and in this case let me go back and let me disable this option just to show you this lattice arrangement now that now it will be a little bit more anisotropic but again i recommend to use this arrangement my personal opinion i think you now the flow the elements will have the tendency to be aligned with the flow so it will reduce any truncation error but it will be up to you to judge that so now that i have that disable click there enable the polyhedral mesh and let me go tap fill and it will do the tetra and the conversion to poly so at this point let's wait a little bit to see the final result okay so we're back and there you go here we have our Santa mesh now look at that we disabled that lattice uh, auction I see that the poly are more anisotropic our nice boundary layer our nice surface mesh resolution in a few simple steps so remember uh it's quite easy to work uh with steel geometry strangulations in any nova you have here now the basic steps how to manipulate and find intersections uh, and in the end also i recommend you to use poly meshes so at this point i think i'm done wish you 
happy holidays and if your bottleneck remember that if your bottleneck in cfd is meshing give yourself the best christmas gift and get a good meshing tool get the best meshing tool and know about the better meshing solution so thank you and see you next time bye